Hello, and welcome back to The Handy Outdoorsman. Today I want to share with you a new generator I purchased for the property. If you follow my channel, you know that my son purchased an RV for the property last fall. Since we don't have power on the property, we rely on a generator. I've been using my Craftsman 5600 watt generator for the last few years, and um, you know it has enough power to satisfy everything we needed to do. Um, even now with the uh, with the RV, uh, there's not any issues by using it. However, there are a few downsides to using this generator, and one of it is the noise. Um, in order to have a normal conversation while the generator is uh, running, you had to be, you know, quite a distance away from it to hear yourself talk. Um, this posed a problem because the electrical cord on the RV was only 10 foot long, so uh, the generator wasn't that far away from the from the trailer itself. And and once you're inside, you could still hear the generator running. The second was the weight. Though the generator was large enough to power the entire RV, the, including the air conditioner, the microwave, and the TVs all at the same time, um, it was also very heavy for one person to lift in and out of uh, the back of my truck. Uh, as I mostly do solo trips uh, these days, I needed something that uh, one person could handle. So I sold the Craftsman and then bought a power horse from Northern Tool. And I haven't seen many reviews for that um, on YouTube for this particular generator, so I just want to go over a few of the features. The unit weighs about 100 pounds, and at first glance it looks just like the Predator 3500 that Harbor Freight sells, um, other than the color. Theirs is, is orange, this one's blue. And as far as I know, um, you know, it could be the same generator but with another name stamped on it for another company. And I have to admit that uh, I looked at the Harbor Freight version. I was planning on buying one, uh, and then I came across the Northern Tool uh, version. After completing uh, an extensive review, I realized they're pretty much identical. Um, so I started comparing the warranties that came with them. And um, I would have to say that between the two companies, you know, I went ahead and paid the extra $80 difference to have the peace of mind if something should go wrong uh, to have a better warranty with the Northern Tool version. Um, the generator is rated at 3500 peak watts and 3000 continuous watts running. It runs uh, 11 hours at a quarter load and only 75 dB at a quarter load as well. And compared to my old uh, Craftsman generator, this is going to be a pleasure to work around if that's true. Now, as far as these numbers go, you know, I don't know how accurate they are. Only time will tell that, uh, you know, once I start using it, you know, can I run that long on, um, you know, a tank of gas at a quarter of a load. Now, with the generator, I got a small bag of tools, which included a funnel for the oil, a screwdriver to remove the side panels, and a spark plug wrench, obviously, to remove the, the spark plug. Um, it does have an electric start. Um, as well as a pull start, and so if the battery should uh, should go dead, you'll have a way of starting it. So the unit comes with one uh, locking 30 amp, 120 volt uh, receptacle right here, as well as one duplex 120 volt, uh, 20 amp receptacles, and there are breakers for each set of outlets here. In addition to that, there's a set of parallel operation outlets. And what this does is it allows me to hook up another generator in parallel with this particular one so that if I need something with uh, more power, you can do that and then run these in parallel. And it, you can also uh, hook up a ground, and I plan on doing that with the RV. Once I uh, get this generator up there and I find the location where I'm going to put it, I'll put a uh, ground rod into the ground and connect it here so that this unit is grounded. There is a digital display meter here and it shows uh, low oil warning, overload indicator, and input uh, as well as uh, what's, you know, what's going in or what's the input coming into the, the generator. And in addition, it'll also display the volts, amps, watts, hours, and all of those settings are done here uh, through this little toggle right here. 
This generator has uh, an electric start, so we're able to, to click this button here with the electric start. And then it also has uh, what they call an ESC throttle, which means engine smart control. When the switch is in the on position, the economy control unit controls the engine speed according to the connected load. When the switch is in the off position, the engine runs at a rated, I think it's 3100 RPMs, regardless of uh, what's connected to it. And then we also have a DC volt uh, receptacle here so that we can go ahead and uh, hook up a battery and then charge it off of this. And this here is our run and choke. You turn this to the choke to get it started. Once it's started and it, and it kicks in, then you turn this to run, and that's all there is. And when you're ready to turn the unit off, you just click it off there. Now this compartment here is for the battery, and I'll get to that in a minute. All right, let's take a minute and um, look at the, the casing or the frame of the unit itself. So again, everything is plastic. It's kind of hard to find something that's not plastic these days. But if you look at the pattern and if you look at the, uh, the shape of it, it's just like the other brand that I mentioned. So it's looking more and more uh, just a different color case, basically. Uh, but there is a, a pull start here that uh, in case the battery should go, should go dead, you can actually manually start this. And this does come off. You need to pry a screwdriver in here. And there's little uh, tabs on either side that holds uh, this part in. But this does come off and you're able to, to get to the engine uh, through this part here. I don't ever plan to take this off. Uh, there's nothing in there that I would need to do. Uh, all of, everything I need to get to is either in the front or on the other side. So uh, I'm not gonna take this off. So here's the back side. Uh, this panel is removable as well on the back. And this is where we have the spark arrester. And the nice thing of it is, is if I can zoom in here, the spark arrester uh, is removable as well to clean and or replace. So that's, that's kind of nice. Now I don't do much camping in uh, national forest, but I believe that that's a requirement that they have, to, all generators have to have a spark arrester on it. So that's good that that does. Now here is the left side of the, uh, the generator, and this has got two panels. The first one being a small panel down here that gives you access to the oil uh, dipstick so that you can go ahead and uh, check the oil uh, whenever you need to. So it's just an easy access to, to check that, that dipstick. This other panel comes off completely, and I've already loosened these screws. You just raise up this top and it should unsnap. There's some snaps on there. And then now you can get in here completely um, to this side of the engine. And then you can go ahead and change your oil filter, get access to drain the oil. And let me show you something about that on that oil drain right here. Now to drain the oil, there is a plug right here. And all you need to do is go ahead and loosen this up. And then you'll see right here, there's a funnel. And this funnel is kind of built in and then it pour, let, allows the oil to flow directly down. And there's a hole down here on the bottom that it goes through. So you would elevate this a little bit, slide a pan underneath there, and then you're able to drop that um, oil right into the pan. Now, there is a part on the bottom that I need to tell you about, so let me flip this over and show you. Be aware that there is a hole with a removable cap on the bottom of the chassis that the oil will flow out of uh, using that funnel. Now, I've got the unit tipped on its side before I put any oil in it or gas in it, just so I can show you where this opening is and then it just kind of snaps back into place. Now obviously 
you don't want to uh, flip it on its side once you put oil or gasoline in it. I just thought it'd be easier to show you uh, now versus later. And then once you've uh, uh, put the cap back on the bottom when you're done, then you can go ahead and put your bolt back. And then this is where you um, check your oil right here, put the, put the bolt back and you're good to go. So getting uh, the oil changed on this should not be that big of a deal. As I mentioned earlier, this generator is equipped with um, an electric start. Well, in order to have electric start, you need a battery. So there is uh, a battery compartment here. I've loosened this up. Maybe not as loose as I thought I did. And the battery fits um, right down here. Slides out, pulls out like so. And then here are your leads to connect it, negative and positive. It doesn't come connected from the factory. You're going to need to do that. Again, with the screwdriver that they provided, uh, fits right on here. There's some uh, washers on here that'll fit, and you tighten that up. And then when you're done and it's all connected, let me get those back out of the way for now. Um, then this slides back in here. There is a strap, a rubber strap to hold it in place. And then you can put the cover back on. Now, one of the other things that uh, this unit is equipped with, if I can show it right here, is that it does have locking wheels. So you can maneuver this lever right here and lock the wheels in place. They are on the cheap side, I would say. So I think eventually I'll be uh, putting a little bit bigger wheels on this. Now the unit rolls fine on a flat, smooth surface, but I'm not sure how it's going to do uh, on any kind of rough terrain. So we'll have to see how that goes. And finally, uh, lastly, is the top of the unit. So here's where we put uh, our gas in. It's got two handles here. Um, not sure what the material is. Piece of aluminum, I think, that's put into the plastic. And this is where you're able to grab it. Again, uh, 100 pounds, little, little weight to it, but not nearly as big as uh, my, my other generator, which was almost 200 pounds. So this is a little bit of a relief getting it in and out of the truck, or I should say it will be. All right, well, let's put a little uh, gas, oil in this, take it outside, and fire it up. Okay, uh, that was not the generator running. That was the heater I have here in the garage to heat up the garage. But I've got the uh, generator up on my workbench, and now we're going to go ahead and uh, put some oil in. I'm using uh, 10W30 uh, synthetic oil. I put this in uh, all of my lawnmowers and had it in my other generator. So I, I like using that. Um, I'm a Valvoline guy, what can I say? So what we're going to do now is go ahead and uh, put some oil in, and again, uh, the oil is put in by removing the dipstick and then using the funnel uh, provided and then you can go ahead and just place this right in here and then slowly add the oil. Now to, to get the oil to the right level on the oil cover that is on the side it tells you um, how full it should be. So it should be just uh, where the threads start to screw in the cap and that's how full it should be for the maximum level. So I'll get it there, I'll pour a little bit in and then I'll let you know exactly how much oil it took to fill this up. And as a precautionary measure, I'm putting a paper towel down just below the spigot because I know that uh, if oil can be spilled, I'll spill it. 
and I just want to make sure we keep this uh, clean. Okay, so there's oil in it. Um, and there's one thing I want to mention is, is you don't need to take the side off completely like I did uh, to put oil in this. There is, remember, a removable um, door right here that you can go ahead and, you know, fill the oil that way. I just removed it so it's easier for you to see, you know, what I was doing as far as how it fills. The second thing is, is there are two rubber hoses on the inside that poke through the chassis and kind of come out the bottom. And what that is, is one is to drain the carburetor, if you ever needed to drain that for storage. And the second thing is uh, for the gas tank, so that you can drain the gas out of the gas tank. So they've kind of thought of that, if you're going to store this for a long time, drain all the gas out of both, so that's pretty good. All right. Uh, we don't need to drain the gas, we need to put some in it. So that'll be the next step, and then we'll be ready to fire this up. So here we are, outside, and uh, we're going to fire this thing up, see how she does. So the operating instructions says to make sure that the, the ESC throttle control is in the off position. I've already gone ahead and uh, connected the battery. We're going to turn this all the way to choke. And that's it. So here we go. First startup. When the light turns green, turn it to run. You can see some of the oil burning off. I think maybe that's where I had to uh, turn it on its side and there was still some residual oil in there. But here I am uh, sitting next to it and hopefully you can still hear me and that the uh, generator is not too loud. So hopefully that's, that's a good thing. There is a little bit of a rattle but it's this wheel locking mechanism right here. As soon as I put my finger on that, it goes away. But we'll be changing those out for sure. So everything's at zero. Uh, there's no load on it, so uh, nothing to display at this point in time. It did get up to 124 volts pretty quickly. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to let this run for 30 minutes and kind of break in. And then once the 30 minutes is done, I'll go ahead and hook up a heater at 1500 watts. Very nice. Once the generators hit the, the 30 minute mark, I'm going to go ahead and plug in this electric heater. And I'm going to run this for uh, a couple of hours so that it's uh, the generator's got a load on it um, and whenever you run a generator you should always make sure that it's got a load on it that's what it's designed to do not just run um, just to, to run the engine but it's better to have a load on it when you run it and on this particular heater it's actually um, 1500 watts so this little heater draws a little bit of wattage here so it's half the load on the, the generator itself so that's what I'll be using I'll put a load on it 50% load I'll let it uh, run for a couple of hours and then I'll check back in with you so here we go we're gonna plug in the heater and then uh, you'll should hear the the engine uh, kind of take the load See the voltage dropped a little bit. You see our amps, our volt amps. I'm sorry, that's our wattage. So that's almost 50% of what the generator can handle. And it really didn't even buckle that much. That wheel's kind of vibrating a little bit more with a load on it. You can see the voltage going up and down from the heater. I'm sorry.
sorry, I keep saying voltage, it's watts. This is on watts right now. That's the voltage, amps, and watts. Let's turn this on eco mode and see what happens. So the generator needed to rev itself up in order to keep up with the, the device that's on there. So turning it on eco mode at half capacity did not make that much of a difference. So, all right, well, let me go ahead and uh, run this for a couple more hours see how she works and under a load. All right, well the uh generator's been running for a couple of hours it's run the heater just just fine um, a couple of things I have noticed in the uh, uh, two and a half hours that it's been running is one um, I did shut it off at about an hour just to check the oil make sure the oil level was fine and it was um, but when I went back through the meter here and tried and I wanted to check everything as far as the volts the amps the, and so forth the the hour meter i thought was continu contiguous in that it showed you know how many hours was actually on the generator but what it actually does is just shows how long it's been running since its last uh, startup once you turn it off and then turn the generator back on um, that meter starts over so that's something that i learned so that hour clock is not how many hours are on the generator but how many hours it was running so there is an external um, meter that you can get that would show the continuous run on something so I'll probably install one of those and I'll do a review on that particular meter and then uh, the second thing is is when I went to go start it back up I thought that since it was already in the run um, and it was warmed up I just had to put it back in the run once I went to go restart it um, it wouldn't start even though the generator was warm I had to put it back into choke and then start it and switch it back over so that was another thing that I learned is that a big deal no just something I learned about the generator itself overall uh, it's quiet I've been inside I can barely hear the generator running so it's not that big of a deal. Um, I'm really uh, thinking that this is going to be a great tool to, to add to the arsenals for taking up north and uh, will be a lot better um, portability wise. And uh, it, this will also fit in the back of my truck and I can put the Tahoe cover down, whereas my other generator, it was just too big and I couldn't close the back of it. So overall, I'm, I'm pretty pleased with this uh, purchase. Now, one of the other things is is that I looked at the maintenance to see when uh, the first oil change was required. They say in the manual to change it after the first 20 hours of operation. And that was one of the reasons I was checking the hours to see what was the total accumulation on the generator in running it. So you'll have to keep track of that for the first 20 hours to change the oil and then uh, they recommend every hundred hours after that so you'll have to again keep track of how much you've used this uh, generator to do the oil change on it but uh, again overall I think it's a great product alright so I hope you enjoy the review and uh, leave a comment down below if uh, you've got this generator and how it's running for you it's new to me but I think it's going to be uh, again a great tool to have uh, for the property as always, I appreciate you watching. Take care and God bless.